Hello everyone. I uh, thought I would make a quick introduction before I get started with this video because it's quite different from the type of content you're used to find on my channel. Maybe I should start by telling you about one of my favorite ASMR channels at the moment. It's called Southern ASMR Sounds. I'll put the link in the description. She's American, she lives in North Carolina, and she makes plenty of different types of videos, but the, the, the ones I prefer are funny role plays with different characters, all of them obnoxious and uh, very bitchy. Maybe you've seen it already, but there is a sub, sub, sub genre of ASMR videos with that type of role plays. I guess they don't work that much as far as triggering ASMR or sleep, even less, is concerned. But I think just the contrast of having someone speaking gently and at the same time saying the worst things to someone else's face can be entertaining when it's well made. So I wanted to make something along the same lines. Now, Southern ASMR Sounds has various characters. I'll put more links in the description. There is a sanctimonious mother, there is a grumpy librarian, and there is also a gold digger called Charity, and I uh, picked her as my victim for uh, this video today. So uh, this video is just a one-off that I wanted to make for fun, and uh, it's not intended to be soothing or cultural. I will return to my usual kind of videos, um, starting with the next one. If you are offended by cynicism, dark humor, classism, you probably want to pass on this one because you're going to be triggered. I think it begins relatively soft, but then uh, it worsens. So go check Southern ASMR sounds and I hope this puts a little smile on your face. I'll see you soon for a new video. Bye bye. Brigitte, est-ce que mon rendez-vous de 4 heures est arrivé? Ok, perfect. You remember what I said. The old man accompanying her is not the grandpa, no, he's the husband. Yes, yes, she's one of these. So, try not to be more rude than necessary this time, ok? You can let them in now. Good afternoon, madame, monsieur. Please, take a seat. I think you can push your husband a little closer to my desk. I'm not going to scream during the entire meeting. Perfect. So thank you very much for being here today and almost on time. Uh, if that's fine with you, I'm going to tell you a little bit more about our agency and what we can do for you. Excellent. So from the form you sent us online, I understand that you wish to buy an apartment in Paris, right? And make it your second home because, and I quote, you dream about the city of love. Really? Well, we'll see about that. So, uh, let me introduce myself. My name is Jean-Francois, and I am the founder of the SAD agency. Yes, it's SAD like the Marquis de SAD. He was one of my ancestors. So, as you already know, we are a real estate agency, but we offer really much more than that and especially for our foreign clients. Because I realized a few years ago that many foreign people, when they arrive in Paris, they make big dreams, of course, of living a classy, enlightened life. And then reality hits. I mean, they just realize that they're not up to it. So it's a blessing that you're here today, actually, because I'm going to be able to offer you much more than just a home. What we offer to foreign people like yourselves, is a complete life and personality makeover so that you can fit in Paris. You understand? We always start with generally a pile of trash. I mean by this gross, uneducated, non-French people. And we shape them, we transform them into beings worthy of this city. Now, I understand that it may sound like it's a lot don't worry, you are in very capable hands here. I've been doing this for more than 10 years. I've been transforming people in a way you could barely imagine. And this new life, this new you, 
is going to be my gift to you, Charity. Yes, my gift. Well, gift. It comes with a price tag attached, but really you will thank me later for that. And I suppose your husband is going to pay for everything, right? So, why, why would you care? Well, speaking of your husband, he seems to be waking up right now. He wants to say something, I think. Maybe you should give him his teeth. Hello, sir. Hello. No, no, sir. I'm not Maurice Chevalier. No, he's dead. He's been dead for a very long time. And no, no, you're not in heaven. No, well, some people would say yes, because it's Paris. But uh, you're not dead, if that's your question. And n no, no, I'm not Pepe Le Pew. No, stop it. I could unplug you, you know that? Okay, he seems to be gone again. Well, keep checking his vital signs. I never forgot to tell you, but if you need anything for a reanimation, we have everything at the reception. You know, we have a defibrillator. You're not the first gold digger to visit this office, so we are equipped. If you see that uh, the pulse is really disappearing, just let me know. I can call Brigitte and she will bring the defibrillator. I'm not going to touch your husband. This is your job, I mean, <laughs> literally. But if you need help, just let me know. Okay, so uh, before we talk about your new apartment, let me see what I'm dealing with in the personality department. Yes, because I've already noted a number of problems with your application. And I think it <laughs> starts with your name, actually. Charity. I mean, what kind of name is that? Is that your real name? No, 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 don't lie, it's not your real name. It makes me think about a stage name, in a sense. But when I say stage, I'm not thinking Broadway. More like uh, exotic dance club stage. You see what I mean? So what was it? Was it your pole dance artist name in the 80s? Okay, apparently you're going to lie. So let me just check the information because I've got a copy of your passport in my file. Oh, nice to meet you, Karen. I also see that you accidentally made a big coffee stain on your birth date. So <laughs> you should have the document remade. But in the meantime, just tell me, what's your birth date? No, 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 it's not 1986. <laughs> no, seriously. No, no, stop. You, you don't need to tell me more. I mean, I've been doing that for a very long time. I'm experienced. You can't fool me. I'm starting to get a certain vibe from you. You know, I'm going to guess where you come from just by looking at you. So I would say your childhood first, early 70s, more likely late 60s, in a trailer park in the American Deep South. Am I right? No, 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 Sherry, you're hilarious, you know. No, you didn't grow up in the Hamptons. And you certainly didn't spend your summers in Italy. I mean, if we were playing Jeopardy, I would ask things that never happened for $1,000. No, these are all big lies. Karen, you can't fool me. You, you're going to need to tell me the truth. Because you know what? I respect your tenacity. I know you're a fighter. You know, many women that come to my office, they're just like you. They're fighters. Right before you, I received a, a Russian businessman with his wife, underage, of course. And let me tell you, this woman, she grew up and she started worse than you. She grew up in some radioactive dumpster in Siberia in the years 2000. And look at where she is now. She's going to be a Parisienne. As I always say, with uh, big dreams and relatively good genes too, you can do anything in Paris. So now, stop hyperventilating and listen to me. To be successful in Paris, you're going to need to come up with a life story. We just cannot tell the true story because it's just pointless and sad. We cannot tell the lies you've been selling in your home country. I mean, maybe your story was believable where you come from. It's the new world. Everyone has poor ancestors. They don't know better. But here, even your janitor is not going to believe you. I mean, it's going to be like a big stain on a tablecloth, very noticeable, or, I don't know, like a puddle of vomit on the couch, you know, colorful vomit 
with extra carrots, everybody is going to see it. Everybody. What you've been trying to do, this cover-up of your real life, it's like people with bad breath, you know? They will take a peppermint or a Tic Tac, and in a sense, it improves the situation a little bit, but it doesn't fix it. So when they talk to you, you feel like you're standing next to a pine tree, but you still smell the dead body rotting behind the tree. You see what I mean? Well, it's the same with your story. You see, your plebeian upbringing still shows behind everything you may say. So what we need to do with you is really deep cleanse your biography, reinvent it, okay? So let me think about a credible story for you. Well, I see, I see Louisiana. I see, it is in the south, so there has to be a plantation. Yes, a family plantation. I know, all the aristocratic family from France that emigrated to America, made a fortune there, and a few generations later, you need to reconnect with your roots and you lack the culture, so that's why you're here. You see, I'm good. This is a good story. This is the kind of story that makes people say hello to you in Paris. That's excellent. What? No, but <laughs> I know it's not true. I mean, we're just replacing your lies with better lies. And don't pretend you just found a moral compass, please, because it doesn't suit you. Okay. And who knows, after all? I mean, I suppose you don't know who your father is. So we know for sure that your story is fake, but mine could be true. You don't know. So, well. Okay, so I'll work on this and I'll come up with more details for your backstory that you will have to learn by heart. You just cannot afford to make any mistakes because people are going to ask questions about you. And uh, obviously we're going to need many more billable meetings before we come up with something presentable. But we'll make good progress. Don't uh, worry about that. I'm sure in a few months you're not going to recognize yourself, which is a good thing. So now another thing I always discuss with my clients is their, it's their general demeanor and uh, style or lack thereof. Uh, it's a cringy part of the meeting, I have to warn you. Oh no, no, it's not, not cringy for you, it's cringy for me. So uh, I have your file, now I see you, and I must say something, Karen. This is completely wrong, completely wrong. Uh, I don't even know where to start with you. Well, first off, you're constantly smiling. And nobody here is going to respect someone who looks that happy. I mean, everybody in Paris knows that happy means dumb. And when you smile like that, I don't know, it suggests that life is light and enjoyable. Everybody knows that it's not here, Karen. Life is just a painful, absurd journey. And then you die. Our philosophers have been working on that for centuries and you clearly need to switch references. I mean, they know better than Oprah or Martha Stewart. So, happy means dumb and uh, you need to stop smiling like this. Now, another thing that is problematic with you are these big laughs that you make when you are uncomfortable. No, no, don't deny it. You've been doing it several times uh, since you arrived. You know these deep throat laughs like this when you are sending your chin to the to the sky and you are moving your hair and you sound like shrek you know what you look like when you do this you look like a, a brothel owner yes like a, a glowing brothel owner who just booked the entire facility for a group of tourists so this needs to go it's always going to be inappropriate i don't know it's like when you are at a funeral and in the middle of the ceremony you start playing hula hoop. I don't know, it can be anyone's funeral. It's never going to be acceptable. Okay, so this needs to go. Now, um, my next point is a big one. It's going to be the style issue. I'm not an expert on this, so you're going to have uh, an appointment with a stylist. But we need to do something about your clothes and your hair and the shoes and the nails 
And even the fake tan, I mean, what is that? What is this color? There are plenty of skin tones on this planet and they can all look good, but this burnt orange that you have, it's nobody's color, Charity. It's impossible. So the, the stylist is going to have to remove this fake color with acid. I'm sorry, there is no other method. And you may want to book two or three weeks in your calendar when you will stay at home because after the treatment, uh, you just cannot go out. People who would see you, <laughs> they would believe they're in a nightmare and you're Freddy Krueger. So uh, uh, you need to anticipate this. What is the goal for your skin tone? Um, how could I find an example that you could understand? I think you got a kind of person who enjoyed the Twilight movies, right? And you think they're good movies. Sure, I knew it. So now remember the girl in the movie, the one who stares at everyone with her mouth open constantly? Yes, her. She has the skin tone you need to go for. You see, very understated, like barely alive, borderline vampiresque. This is to be your goal. And you can also learn from her general attitude. You know this bored, slightly pissed off vibe that she gives. This would be useful in Paris. Because the thing is, you will never make friends in Paris if you are the happy dumb American woman who finds everything awesome and likes to make too much noise about it. No, Karen, things are not awesome here. No, everything sucks and people even more than things. But once again, no worry, we're here for you. You're going to have street behavior classes and you will see the details with your professor. But the general idea is that when you walk in the street, you must learn to exude contempt towards people around you. They barely exist, you know. It must look like there is constantly something on your mind. It can be whatever you want, your depression, your love triangle, or just this general concern we all share about the passing of time that ruins our lives like a wrecking ball in slow motion. So I'm not saying you have to be unhappy all the time. In the comfort and the privacy of your home, you can be as gross as you want. But when you're outside, you clearly need to look unhappy. And a place where you need to be particularly unhappy is every single restaurant and cafe where you will go once you live in Paris. I mean, you can never let the waiters insult you. Um, you can absolutely not let them think they have an influence of you, on you. They are, they're cockroaches. So you need to make them understand that they are nothing to you, but you won't even take the time to crush them. It may look civilized out there, but believe me, it's not. It's the jungle. So you need to toughen up if you want to uh, survive in this environment. Good, so uh, next point. Oh yeah, that's an important one. Uh, when do you plan on starting your diet? Because we can help you with that too. Uh, no, of course you need to start a diet. I mean, look at you, where are your bones? I can't see them. No, look, I'm really open-minded about weight in general. I mean, my wife was almost 100 pounds when we got married. But you will need to be on a diet at least eight, nine months per year when you live here. This is not negotiable. Now, don't, don't worry, because we've got a great program for that, and it's based on three big meals. N no, stop, you're smiling again. No, stop smiling. It's three meals per week. So, <laughs> you see, you were wrong again. But don't, don't worry too much about the nutrition part of this program, because it's not the core of it. Uh, to explain you, mm, did you see the Clockwork Orange movie? Perfect, because this is directly inspired by it. So during daytime, what we do is we, we put you in a room with a giant screen. On the screen there are videos of people's mouth eating stuff. You also have headsets and uh, we send you the eating sounds directly into your ears at 60 decibels. And we... Uh, we make sure that you watch everything by uh, forcing your eyes open with staples. Extremely efficient. I mean, after just a few hours of this, you will never think about eating again. The three meals, you will think they are too much. Now, 
with everything I said, I understand it sounds a bit complicated, but it's really not. I mean, you just need to visualize the kind of woman you have to become. And it's not that complicated. You need to be just this rather cold, very thin, classy, intellectual, rich, but not interested in money, pissed off, uh, stylish, cultured woman. That's all. There's nothing else. If you really want to stand out from the crowd, we can add you a couple personality traits like an interest in sociology or modern art, whatever it is. But really, the concept is quite simple. You just need to visualize the goal. So, uh, this is your program for the next few days. You're starting tomorrow morning at 8 with your first cheese class. That's a funny one. And then you have hair and makeup at 10. Well, of course, they will never be done after just one session, but at least they can begin with the clearing. Um, that's another point I have to warn you about. They will try to give you a, a more appropriate kind of cut uh, and uh, general appearance, but they need to find a, a balanced result and it's a work in progress always so in the first few days after the first session you may look a little bit like Rod Stewart but once again it's like the Freddy Krueger thing it will pass and uh, life will come back to normal eventually for the rest of the day I, I think you could use some catch-up with your knowledge of constructivism you will need to make conversations if you need to go to the bakery to buy bread for example and this is the kind of topic that's appropriate for a, a casual conversation. And you will spend the night uh, studying Foucault and Bourdieu. Yeah, because you, you come across as someone who has big gaps in your knowledge of post-Marxist uh, critical sociology. You do. It's, uh, it's really insufficient for the moment. So we, we need to do something about that quickly. No, <laughs> no. Stop pretending you know who Bourdieu is. He's not a shoe designer. And you never met him, I mean, he's dead. No. Well, so uh, we are done with the general remarks. Uh, so now let's talk about your property a little bit. So uh, this is a map of Paris. So look, this is the entire urban area of Paris. But don't even think about living outside the limits of the city of Paris. In this perimeter, you have about 2 million acceptable humans who live beyond this limit. This is a wasteland, Charity. There are, I don't know how many million zombies in the wasteland. So you, you don't want to cross the gates. It's like Mordor. If you do it, you, you'll never be back. You need to live inside this perimeter. So this is where we are looking for a property. Now, I'm not gonna lie, there is absolutely no neighborhood in Paris that can match your actual tackiness. Um, so we need to compromise. And then hopefully with time you're going to improve and uh, the gap between you and the place where you live will become less uh, ridiculous than it's going to be uh, at the beginning. So we have a few streets in this part of Paris, which I think could be the, the most appropriate for you. There are Russian oligarchs, there are reality TV personalities who make much more money than they should, um, wealthy football players. This is typically the kind of neighborhood where you could bump into a Kardashian when they're in Paris. You see, that, that's, that's the kind of vibe uh, this place has. So, yes, it's very expensive. I mean, it, it's a good thing that your husband is sleeping right now. I hope he's sleeping. Yeah. Does he have a pulse? Good. Um, so let's let him sleep because you could really have a heart attack if he saw the prices. Um, so I'm going to give you this selection of uh, uh, exclusive apartments in our catalog that you can study and just, just tell me which ones you would like to visit. I think many of them uh, have the kind of vulgar fittings that you may enjoy because they are owned by football players. So, for example, this one has a, a hot tub with a, a mini bar. 
this one has mirrors on the bedroom ceilings i think you enjoy that kind of thing yeah they all have lifts so uh, in case your husband makes it until you move in this could come handy and in any case if you need to see more pictures you can revise our instagram yeah instagram i need to talk to you about this because i reviewed your account and uh, <laughs> i think you're going to need to shut it down and uh, restart entirely i mean there are just selfies of you making a duck face at the altar or in a graveyard the locations well they're kind of okay almost i guess this is completely unintentional but this uh, alternance of uh, churches and graveyards it gives the uh, impression that you are making a reflection and taking a stance on the eros and thanatos myth of course you didn't we we know that it's not intentional uh, but the duck face no it's uh, totally unacceptable so it, it needs to disappear you will delete all your posts and we're going to replace them with new pictures we have a consultant for that i already put uh, a slot with him in your program and he's going to take you to bookshops museums restaurants and we'll make enough pictures of you in black and white uh, with uh, an artsy vibe reviewing books or buying a turtleneck near the Sorbonne or going shopping with your wicker basket buying macarons but don't eat them you cannot afford this um, we can also shoot you meditating in front of a grave at the Père Lachaise on a rainy day that can be a good picture um, just for inspiration on your Instagram look at this picture it's it's taken from the instagram account of one of the girls that are instagram parisienne for a living look at this perfect match of consumerism and fake authenticity look how she pretends she doesn't see the photographer this is good inspiration for you charity look look it really takes a cynical cold-hearted bitch to do something like this yeah this is the kind of girl you you need to be so you will meet with our consultant uh, his name is Guy no Guy no no you're saying it wrong it's Guy with the middle of the throat no <laughs> no stop it's it's completely wrong look it's impolite what you're doing right now it's disrespectful how can i introduce you to someone if you cannot even pronounce his name properly i mean in our agency we we don't do unpolite we believe in respect and uh, i think you could have made a little effort to just adjust yourself to our ethics okay so now we're going to need to add pronunciation classes to your program i'm sorry because it's very full so I guess this is going to have to be on Sundays at midnight. So you will rehearse pronunciation with edit. No, edit. No, no, stop talking. It's uh, it's embarrassing. So you, you will meet with uh, edit next Sunday. I have to warn you though. Uh, edit is a bit special. She's very temperamental. She's a very small woman. But it's incredible the level of hate and anger in such a small body so actually a temperamental is an understatement she's pissed off all the time so you will need to be extremely kind extremely calm you will need to smile all the time that's an occasion when your fake smile might be useful but you need to be extremely kind with her like you are with the giant resins in a wheelchair that you pick for husbands and don't feed her after midnight never well while we are on the topic of social networks we also need to talk about facebook yes we do first of all charity why would you even be on facebook i mean that was probably the right thing to do 10 or 15 years ago but today you know what facebook is today it's where the middle class goes to vent about their feelings i mean <laughs> i hate this word i mean you can no longer be one of these people who go on facebook to post inspirational quotes 
and uh, swallow conspiracy theories about vaccination. No. You think it makes you unique or interesting? Because it doesn't. I mean, I had a look at your page, and it's a collection of quotes like nothing is impossible, keep calm and love life. Pff, really? I mean, maybe you think that makes you look deep, but the only thing it suggests to me is that I don't know, the biggest book you ever read was a sticker. No. No valuable philosophy can ever be summed up on a fridge magnet. No. So all this needs to go. You're going to uh, delete your Facebook page. It's gross to be on Facebook anyway. What are you doing with this? Okay. Uh, I think we've gone through the main points already. So, voila. Charity. I think that was a good meeting. I was in a good mood today, so I, I really spared you. So you're going to start your program tomorrow morning, and uh, every week I will give you an assignment. Now, my assignment for you for next week is that you learn French, so we can have our next meeting in French. Oh, no, absolutely. I, I mean, today I've been kind enough to speak your language because it's the first time. Uh, but I mean, you need to meet. You need to make your part of the work. I'm not going to always do everything for you. You need to work. Yeah, I know, it hurts, but uh, this is what normal people do. So you have one week. And, uh, I mean, sooner or later you will need to speak French if you live in Paris. I mean, if you just don't want to starve. People are not going to serve you in grocery stores or bakeries if you don't speak the language. So you'd better start now. Okay, um... Thank you very much for your time, and uh, I can't wait to see the first signs of the new you next week. Brigitte will help with uh, pushing your husband to the lift on the way out, and she can also call the car if you need one. Thank you very much for your time, we're going to make a great job together. I already like you. Okay, au revoir. <laughs>